Welcome to the tutorial video for Stonefire. Here's what the game box looks like. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay, what you see here is what you're going to be getting in your copy of Stonefire. Uh, there are two exceptions here. Uh, the booklet is not shown because I was working on it still while I had this copy sent to me. So it is complete. It's full color, lots of illustrations, um, 20 pages long, so it gets into the game, gives you a lot of the details. Also, the other thing is this turn sequence card that each player will get. Um, there will actually be four of them in the game. For some reason, when I sent, got this sent to myself, I forgot to change the quantity to four. That has since been changed. So outside of those two items, what you see here is what you will be receiving. Uh, let's start with the box. The box itself is the Game Crafters, what they call their small, sturdy box. Um, it's actually a decent sized box. It's deep, two inches deep. It's made of very thick cardboard. It slides together very well, comes apart very well. Very proud of this box. Um, you can put a lot of weight on it, I'm pushing on it right now, and it doesn't do anything to it. So it's a very strong, sturdy box. So let's put that to the side. Um, what else will be in the game? You will be getting four of these cards here that are your um, clan cards. So each player will be getting one of these cards. Each card gives you some unique abilities that you can trigger by spending these egg cards. So let's take a look at these egg cards. Egg cards are um, gained in a variety of ways um, in the game, usually by um, securing a location or by taming a dinosaur. And what these do is essentially give you points at the end of the game. There's some sort of set collection mechanics in here. Some of these are worth zero points. Um, but you keep these a secret from other players, so no one really ever has a, a great idea of uh, who's in the lead. So that kind of helps for uh, gameplay. But also you can spend these, any ones you want, out of your hand. So if you get doubles or something, or something that's maybe one of the ones that's worth zero, you can still spend it to activate one of these clan powers. So you have those. Um, you have your wilderness deck, which is sort of the meat and potatoes of the game. These are all the enemies that you'll be facing and obstacles throughout the game. And um, you'll be fighting these in different locations. There's all different types of them. I made a lot of different types of dinosaurs and creatures that you can... Um, deal with throughout the game. Lots of unique illustrations. Um, each character, each one of these creatures has you know, unique abilities. They give you victory points at the end of the game. Some are more rare than others. And these are what you're going to be working your way through in the game. They also act as a timer. So once this deck runs out, um, the game it triggers the final round of the game. So you have uh, this amount of time essentially to complete uh, the game and how do you complete the game is by defeating the Allosaurus which is in the, the clearing location so there are locations inside of this um, deck as well so you have the clearing location which is taken out during setup we'll go over that next and there's a bunch of other locations as well when those locations are drawn from the wilderness deck on each player's turn they are added to the locations that players can try to conquer the other meat and potatoes of the game is this deck, the tribal deck. These are the cards that players will have in their hands and they'll be using to uh, take on these um, things in the wilderness deck. They'll also be putting basically banking cards into their village each turn to build up uh, sort of a, um, a army of characters that they can draw upon later in the game so they can make a large attack. So you have all sorts of things in here like a saber cat which you can actually tame that can just uh, use, be used uh, to attack locations. You have all different types of characters. Like I said, a lot of unique artwork in this game. All different types of characters that you can use. There's some pretty cool mechanics we'll go over in a minute as to how you deploy these in hunting parties to take on various creatures. So yeah, that's your, um, your um, tribal deck. Lastly, you have these rage tokens. These will be used on um, certain locations. Trigger these to be placed on cards. Certain uh, enemies in this wilderness deck, re deck require you to place these cubes on there. And what they do is essentially increase the target number that you're going to have to uh, get to or reach in order to defeat them. Um, some of them are based on how many players are in the game. So it's sort of a mechanic that equalizes the difficulty in the game. Lastly, we have these cool little um, custom cut dinosaur. I made uh, two of them because I want players to have a choice just so you can be the triceratops or the velociraptor. So a start player takes this as a start player token. So that way when the end of the game is triggered um, we, you as the players know who um, started the game so you, everyone gets one more um, turn to play. 
Lastly, two cool components that are also included in your copy of Stonefire are a couple of promo cards for Desolate players. There is the Knuckles, which is a pretty cool card. And for uh, Iron Helm players, there will be an included character that you can use. That's pretty much it. Um, let's take a look at setup. Okay, now I already do a little setup here. I have my uh, tribal deck here, my wilderness deck placed right below it. I have my egg uh, deck placed right to the side here. And my rage tokens over here where all players can reach. Um, first thing you're going to do is remove um, four the four uh, clan cards and you're going to distribute them. Well, I'm just going to set this up for a two player game. There's not a lot of room within this uh, scope of this lens so I'm going to be placing one of the players here so you get an idea of how the player's um, area is going to look. So you just shuffle up these. These are the uh, clan cards. Give each player one of them and put the others aside. Each one of these, like I mentioned, will give you a couple of powers. This one here gives the ability to, you may play an additional pink card this turn, or you can spend an egg to activate this one, which allows you to destroy all rage tokens in this battle. So, you keep this in front of you. Gives you a couple of special abilities. The next thing you're going to do is give each player a reference card. Well, like I said earlier, I only have one, but there will be four in the final version. So each player will have this in front of them. This will give them a basic idea of what they can do on their turn in really uh, simple terms. Um, the next thing that you're going to do is um, shuffle the tribal deck and deal five cards to each player. So you're going to keep these um, cards um, secret. You're only you're going to look at them. Um, and these are going to be the cards you're going to utilize to go hunting and to do other things in the game. So you'll sh shuffle these up, you'll deal out five to each player. I'm just gonna do five to the one player because we're just gonna be doing a little quick tutorial here. So since this is a tutorial, I'll show you what this character got. Uh, he has a, a couple of sling men, um, a warrior, two warriors, and a spare woman. So we'll place those in front of him. Um, normally you'd have these in your hand uh, so other players can see them, but we'll just place them over here. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove from the Wilderness deck the Allosaurus and all of the location cards. So the Allosaurus starts, he's the, the, the tough boss character in the game, um, starts in the clearing. So you're going to find all the locations and there's six of them in the game. But the one that's the, the most important is the clearing. This is the one that will also trigger the end of the game. So if any player is able to get uh, and defeat the clearing, which will have a couple of dinosaurs in it, um, that'll trigger the end round as well. So either this wilderness deck needs to run out or one of the players has to defeat this location. So each location when it's drawn from the wilderness will give you some instructions. This one here tells us to add the Allosaurus and one card from the wilderness deck. Uh, you must fight all things within this um, one location together. Uh, what else does it say? It may only be attacked if all other locations have been resolved. So like I said, there might be other locations that come out and you can't go after this one until all the other locations that come out um, throughout the course of the game are defeated. So it kind of puts a little pressure uh, on you to get um, that done. So, so to, in order to finish this, we have the Allosaurus. The Allosaurus also gives us some information. It says add three rage tokens plus one rage token per player. So I'm going to add three because there are the three that asks for it. Plus we're playing with a two player game here. So how we're setting it up, we'll add two more. So each one of these rage tokens adds one to the strength of the enemy. So this Allosaurus already has nine. Now he has five rage tokens. That means his difficulty level is 14. Now let's not forget the clearing also asks us to draw another card from the wilderness deck and add it to this location. So we are going to do that. We're going to draw a card. We'll place it on this side and we've got a Troden. Troden says add two rage tokens per player to this card. So this guy is going to get four rage tokens on him. This is a pretty tough location now. So to, in order to defeat this, you're going to have to play a number of cards from your hand and from your village, which you will be adding cards to and building throughout the course of the game, in order to um, get a sum that equals the power of this location. So this location is already 14 because of the Allosaurus and now another additional six because there's probably a little pack of these guys. So 6 plus the 14 is 20. So you have to keep that number in your head right in the beginning of the game. You're trying to get a, a powerful attack that will reach 20. Now, you will take the other remaining 
five locations, flip them upside down, give them a little shuffle, and you will add one at random. We got the shore. The other ones will then be added back to the wilderness deck. So we'll shuffle them in. We're just going to put them in here like this. And then you'll have to read what it says on this location. This location says add one card from the wilderness deck and add one rage token. So that's not too difficult. So there's one strength because of the shore and we'll add one. Oh, I don't know how we got that right away. A triceratops. Okay. So the Triceratops, um, his says, deals three damage when played from your village. So this is a qu quick opportunity to let you know that certain uh, dinosaurs or creatures are going to come available um, from this wilderness deck that you can either attack and kill um, like you would in any normal hunting situation, and that would be the number you're going after, the larger uh, number on the top. Or, alternatively, you can spend a few more um, characters or another more powerful character to reach that lower number, or the, I should say it's a higher number, but it's lower, um, of 8. And if you hit that 8, you'll be able to tame the card. So instead of this card just going into a victory pile for endgame scoring, that's what this star down here means, you will actually get to put this card in your village, and then later and later turns, you can uh, deploy it from your village and do a 3 damage. So that's a pretty cool card. So... Um, Something to think about in the game. Do you spend extra to get um, certain dinosaurs into your village that you can tame and then use deploy them later on to attack uh, perhaps the clearing? It's a lot of uh, give and take. They're also going to see some good scoring opportunities um, throughout the game just coming out of the basic wilderness deck. So winning the clearing doesn't mean you won the game. You still have to add up points at the end of the game. So sometimes you might spend a whole great deal portion of the game trying to build up uh, the ability to go after the clearing, but in the meantime, you're um, not going after other smaller opportunities, and you might end up losing even though you took the clearing. So it's a little give and take there, something to um, strategize about. Okay, um, the next thing you have to do is, we did that, shuffle that, um, place the clearing, we did that, um, at a random location, we did that, we shuffle the egg deck, place it down, we did that, um, draw two cards in the wilderness. Okay, so then we're almost done here. All we have to do now is take, um, we have to basically seed the wilderness. So this, we have to imagine this is sort of the, the center of the forest or the thick where we're trying to um, stop all the uh, dinosaurs from coming from and invading our area or taking over our territory. So each turn, um, dinosaurs come out and they're deployed on either side of this. So, there we go. And then that basically uh, concludes setup. So we'll go over exactly how all this works a little more detail in the next section. So let's move on to gameplay. Okay, welcome to the gameplay portion of this tutorial. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the setup is that you need to, at random, choose a uh, start player. So that start player will then get to pick one of these start player tokens and place that in front of them. That will identify them as the player who went first. So when the end of the game is triggered, all players will get an equal number of turns. So basically, Stonefire works in rounds, and each round is made up of each player having one turn. Um, when the end of the game is triggered, as we mentioned, it can be triggered in two different ways. Either the last card is drawn from the Wilderness deck, which will immediately trigger the final round. All players will get an equal number of turns. Or one player somehow manages to defeat the clearing. When that happens, all other players will get an opportunity to get one more turn. Um, and the start player so that everyone has equal number of turns. So, on your turn, basically on your turn, you're going to be making a few decisions and choices. Let's take a look at a few of those. Okay, let's take a look at how a player's turn um, unfolds. On your turn, you're going to um, follow this little guide here of the phases of each of, of your turn. And the first decision you're going to have is are you going to go hunting or are you going to go searching? Let's go, let's look at searching first. Searching is for the player who on your turn you you sort of survey what's out there and you just determine that either one, there's nothing out there that you really have the capabilities of defeating or two, you really just want to build up your village for a later turn. So how that would work is if you wanted to search you would get to take an egg card any just a top egg card so I would take this card I, let's take a look at it I got a one 
uh, victory point. If I collect all four different types, I get an extra three victory points. So let's just pretend I'm going to search this turn, and then I'll reset. So if I search, I would take this card, I would place it so other players can't see it. I can look at it, of course. Then I would get to take two cards from my hand and place them in my village. So let's say I really wanted to keep the Spare Woman because she's a pretty good car card. And maybe I keep one of the green cards just so I have some versatility. Whenever I, I decide to place any cards in my village on my turn, I have to discard any remaining cards. This sort of helps you keep getting a fresh hand. So then I would get, uh, gain five new cards. Okay. So I get five new cards. So these cards here are now in my village. I can utilize those in conjunction with the cards in my hand in a subsequent turn. So let's just say that was my first turn. Let's just say I decided to search. Other players take their turns of doing what they want to do and it get, comes back to me. Now I get this first uh, decide if I want to go hunting or searching. Now let's take a look at what I have here. I have uh, this companion card here, a dire wolf which does one damage, but I, I can have an, any number of them as I want to form my hunting party. I also now gain some blue cards here. I have a medicine woman. She's pretty good. I also have a couple slingmen, and I have a scout. So each card has special abilities on here. Uh, we'll go over those in a moment as to what each one does, but for now let's take a look at hunting. So let's take a look at the other all the areas out here that I could potentially go after. Um, I could go after this giant scorpion, although there's also a velociraptor, but when we um, set this up, we forgot to read um, the ability here of this velociraptor. It says, draw another card and attach it to this one. You must fight it together. So very similar to one of these locations. Now I have to draw another card, place it next to this velociraptor, and now uh, I have to battle both of these cards at the same time. So now you need a value of six to take out these two cards. You can't take one or the other, you have to take both now because they're sort of attached together. Now, that really closes the door on that option for me, but now I should be able to take him out still easily. Now I could just use the cards from my village if I wanted to, because their sum is two, his power is two, and I could destroy him, but the goal in this game is to build up your village to give you versatility and more cards to um, use later on in the game. So, I am going to go after him with cards from my hand. I am going to use the Slingman and let's think about this smartly. I will use, uh, let's do the Slingman, the Medicine Woman. Now uh, let's do the Slingman. You gotta, do, you gotta do a little thinking here. The Slingman, the Dire Wolf, and the Cook. So why would I do that? Let's talk about that. The uh, Cook allows me to, when, after this battle, it allows me to take one of the cards used in this battle and place it into my village. So that's really an, another powerful ability. Um, the Slingman has the ranged skill. Certain enemies out here, will uh, you will have to have a ranged character. In fact, this character, uh, this dinosaur here, must have a ranged character in your hunting party in order to attack these cards. So not only did this um, Velociraptor get uh, you know, three more power because he was added to it, now you need to have a ranged character to even take this one out. So if I had the power to do it, I could go after that now because I have that ranged power. Uh, the ranged skill also has a really unique ability. As more cards are coming out of this wilderness deck, this, this is going to keep expanding out and out and out. You always have to tack or go after the cards that are furthest away from the wilderness deck unless you have a card with the, wilderness, um, with the um, ranged ability. Then you're able to attack any card you want anywhere within the wilderness. So that's the other ability that goes along with that. So let's go back to this hunt. Here's my hunting party, total value of two. I get to kill him. I have destroyed the giant scorpion. He goes into my victory pile for end of game scoring. Also, I need to take note of a few things on here. Always read the card text. This guy here says, when defeated, all players must discard one card from their hand. So defeating this scorpion hurts all players, including yourself. So I'm going to have to discard a card from my hand. That's not great, so I'll discard this medicine woman. And this, uh, what else does it say? It says it gives me an egg. Whenever there's an egg icon on a location or on an enemy that you defeated, you get to draw an egg card. So now I get to draw another egg card. What do I get this time? 
uh, I got a rotten egg. It's worth zero victory points. This thing is garbage, but it can be used to activate one of these special abilities that maybe I'll use in a later turn. So I've defeated him. I get zero victory points at the end of the game for it, but I did get an egg card from him, and I will place him there. This ability allows me to keep one of the cards that I used into my village. So I will keep this dire wolf since he is a companion and he's basically a wild that can use him any number of these in later turns. Um, the other two cards will be discarded and that'll end that portion of my turn. Next thing I get to do is add a card to my village. Since I hunted I only get to add one card and I did this on purpose because I'd like to keep the scout so I get to keep my scout. I'll place her there and then the next thing I do is I draw back up to five and then I have to refresh the game board so I will draw one card from the wilderness deck and place it here. Ooh, we got the Carnosaurus. The Carnosaurus is one rage token plus one rage token per player so we're playing a two-player game here in pretend land so he'll have three. One thing that I just messed up on a moment ago, on my turn when I searched, you still always have to add a card from the Wilderness deck, even if you search. The Wilderness is basically spilling out with bad guys, so it's also the timer in the game. So whether you search or hunt, you always have to draw a card from the Wilderness deck. Okay, now I got my new cards, I refreshed the thing, my turn is over, I'm getting a lot of green cards, but I did get some more companions here. Let's take a look at how the game unfolds as we get a few more turns in. Okay, I've simulated a couple rounds going by. I've taken on another dinosaur, collected another egg, and added some more cards to my village. Um, there's more cards have coming out of the wilderness, so it's starting to sprawl out. And now my options um, are starting to get greater because now I have all these cards here that I can utilize on my turn. I have some eggs, so I can utilize some clan power. So let's look at the options that you might have uh, two or three turns into the game. So I have drawn my cards. Here's what I have. I have a spare woman. I have a cook. I have a tamer and a wolf master and a scout. Again, each one of these cards has different unique abilities. Um, this symbol here of the red block with the cross through it means that you can cancel out all the rage tokens in a spe any specific location or encounter. So I could use that ability, it's automatic, to remove all of these per se and then just have to deal with that uh, those some of those two numbers and not have to worry about the rage tokens. So that's a pretty powerful skill as well. So Let's take a look and maybe we can utilize that. Um, one thing I could do, which would be uh, a pretty good thing to do, is try to go after this location here that will open this up, that will allow us to go after the clearing. Um, but I could also get um, two eggs out of this, because there's an egg from the location and an egg from um, defeating the Triceratops. Now I get that egg whether I tame him or whether I happen to defeat him um, and um, basically hunt him. So do I have the ability to get to six? So all I need is six plus this rage token. So this spare woman here would uh, uh, get rid of that rage token, so that would be gone, plus one, so I'm at only needing five now. Um, I could use six, uh, it'd be four, there's another one here, and I definitely have the ability to, if I draw from out of my um, village. So let's say that I am um, contemplating that right now. That's one move I could do, it would give me this location, which has some bonuses to it as well. We'll go over in a moment. Or it looks like another really good um, opportunity for me here. Ooh, I got a couple of good ones here. I could go after the Carnosaur. Um, he would only need five. This ability here again would take out those rage tokens. So I'd only need five if I use this card. He'd give me five victory points in the, the game. That's a lot of points. Another thing I could do is go over here. I only need six, and then I could again get rid of these, and then I'd get both of these cards. That'd be eight victory points. That's a lot of victory points over there. Now, lastly, I could go after this Triceratops. I could try to get to eight and tame him, which would give me this card to put in my village, give me two egg cards and three victory points at the end of the game. A thing that should be noted is all locations this is what I was going to mention earlier, have a special ongoing ability. So once you take a location card, you get to place this in front of you, sort of next to your um, clan card, and it gives you an ongoing ability. So if I take this shore, I get to plus one to the sum of all future attacks when um, 
uh, attempting to tame. So this ability gives me the ability to tame creatures easier. Hmm. So that'd be kind of nice to have. Let's just say, let's say I'm going to go after that. Maybe I just really want to get those egg cards. That's going to be my strategy. Get some bonus points that way. Um, so I will need a total of six if I want to just defeat him. And let's see if I can even get to eight. So let's try to go after the eight. Let's try to tame him. So I do have a tamer in my hand here, which does one damage and also plus one to attacks when attempting to tame. So this would basically be two points going towards the taming. So we need that. Um, so then I could use my spare woman, which would get rid of this out of the equation and take one, do one more damage. So that would bring me down to only needing five. Then I could add to it a green card. I have one in my hand. That would bring it down one more. I only need to do four damage. Can I get there? I can draw. I got two here. I cannot do it. So I can attack it without. I won't be able to tame. So that's fine. I'll do one, two, three, four, five. Nope, I still can't do it. Nope, I can't do it. So I'm going to go after this carnosaur. I'm going to use these same cards here. This will get rid of these rage tokens. Um, and since I have a ranged character in my in my party, I can attack this card because it's not on the outside. So I will take this card. And how else? Where are the rest of my points coming from? This will slide over. I need to get to five. I took a, the rage tokens are gone. I got three here, and I will use these two cards here from my village. These are freely removed from the village to attack it. So that's a total of five damage I did. Those go into discard. I get to keep this card for end game scoring. And then to finish off the rest of my turn, I get to put one of these away. I'll definitely keep this Wolf Master. He's a really powerful card. I would like to have kept him along with my wolves, but hopefully I get some more wolves because he gets to add damage when using the wolf. This card here will then be um, discarded and I will draw five new cards. So you got a good idea of how each turn goes. You're essentially making the decision, do you want to search, which is going to help you out in the future by giving you uh, an egg card and allowing you to um, put more cards in your village or you're going to hunt and try to get some points now. Then you're going to add cards to your village, you're going to draw back up and then you're going to add a new card to the wilderness. So we'll do that right now. So. The game continues in this fashion until, um, like I said, this deck runs out or this location is defeated. I like to look at a few more little things before I conclude this tutorial, so let's take a look at those. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of other things. Um, one important thing that has not happened yet in this tutorial that I'd like to show how it would work is there are these cards called quest cards that are in this wilderness deck. So let me see if I can, oh, there's one right here. So when a quest card is drawn, it is placed up here. Okay, a quest card is essentially like any other encounter, it has a value. So let's look at this one here. This is In Search of Fire. So it is a quest, it tells you it's a quest right there. It requires a total value of four, okay? so. It, each one of these quests have some sort of stipulation. So in order to de, um, beat this quest, you will have to use at least one character with that symbol or one character with that symbol um, to complete the quest. So you will need essentially, it looks like, a green card and um, whatever one is the pot. I'm losing my mind. The blue. Okay. So you need the blue or and a green card, part of your party essentially, to defeat this card. So. This card comes out. You'd also, and it also, just like a location. So if this was drawn at the end of your turn during the refresh, you draw it to place it out. Oh, it's a quest. It goes up here. You'd have to draw another card out. Put that in play. Okay. Now you could immediately decide, I want to take this quest. You would take this quest card and you place it in front of you. You can place one card per turn on it, so you don't get to form an entire group and just accomplish the quest immediately. This will take um, a couple of rounds at least in order to complete. So you'll take this quest card, you'll place it in front of you, and then you will be able to place a card free. There's no, it doesn't count as any action. It's a free action. I can place a card on there. Well, since this one needs uh, a green card on there or a blue card, maybe I'll place 
uh, my sling men on there like that and that's it and then each each turn each round it comes back to you you can add another card to this right so eventually you're trying to get to four points you have to meet these requirements now the trick about quest or what makes uh, the, the pressure luck portion of choosing a, a quest is with one of the other um, quests come out there's three total so the other two if another one comes out it deactivates your quest immediately so the new quest would come out here everyone would have access to it just like before but any quest that's in progress would be lost so you need to complete this quest before another quest card comes out so why would you ever take on that um, task well first of all they give you a good amount of victory points and then they also give you an egg the reward it matches the risk so quests are very um, a tantalizing option especially if you feel like you're um, falling behind a little bit you might want to pressure luck and go after a quest so that's how the quest cards work um, if you have any other questions about this game please leave comments and I will definitely answer you as quickly as I possibly can I appreciate your time and I hope that I was fairly clear as to how the game runs um, and thank you very much for watching